Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today at Treat Especial. We got some old school, cool industrial gear. This is a tachometer from a bygone age when you didn't need electricity. There's no electrical connections, no batteries, nothing at all. And yet still, it functions as a perfectly serviceable tachometer. If you're anything like me, you got a special place in your heart for real ingenious mechanical contrivances. This thing is brilliantly simple because one, as I said, you don't need electricity, but two, you don't actually need to come into contact with any shafting or anything like that. Behold, we can tell that this compressor is running at 31 to 32 uh, 100 or 1,000 ripples. And we also have a harmonic there at 45. Let's have a look, see how fast this saw blade is turning. You can see here that the blade is turning at, what, 4,600 ripples. Now, the motor is turning quite a bit faster than that. Let me focus out, you fuck. But the gauge doesn't read that high. So we saw it hunting a little bit. And once, it, once the grease loosened up in there, she come up almost 100 ripple. And if we look at the label, sure enough, it's rated for 4,600 revolutions per minute. Devilishly clever and it's about, I'm tickled pink about this device. It's so fantastic because it's an analog. It doesn't just give you a numerical reading. You can see the change and the rate of change. And you can also see, you know, like when the grease gets up to temperature, you can see it's, it's starting to kick over. It's starting to kick over. Ah, it's at, it went from 4,500 to 4,600. You can also see if it's within the range of the gauge here, the tachometer, you can also see harmonics. This case has very likely never been opened and the James G. Biddle company is associated with Megger now, that British uh, electrical instrument, what gives apprentices shocks. This is strictly for, <laughs> strictly for shits and giggles. So there's the glass there. And a little piece of, oh wow, not even paper. It's actual metal. And that's the instrument. This is so friggin' cool because it's so simple and it can be used not only as a tachometer, but also a vibration sensor. What these are, are musical tines. They're, they're just like in a music box, except there's no drum to actuate the tines. What's actuates in the tines is the actual vibration through the casement. So if we look at this, what we're doing is we're coinciding any kind of imbalance in the motor and there's gonna be imbalance, especially in just an industrial motor. So if we have 3000 ripples, we divide that by uh, six, 60 seconds to the minute, right? RPM, revolutions per minute. We divide that by 60, that gives us uh, 50 Hertz. So this, little tine resonates at 50 hertz. The 400 would be 666 pity a dick, and the five would be 80. So a very narrow band of, of, of sensing. It only goes from 50 hertz to 80 hertz. But the beauty of this is if you get a different range, you can go all the way up to 20 kilohertz. Here are the resonant tines, and if we look on the backside, we can see why they no longer make these instruments, because every one is hand finish. Duh. You see that? So they've soldered weights onto there. These are very likely brass, and then painted, and then hand filed until they got just the right mass in order for it to resonate at the correct frequency. You see how much work went into this and you compare that to just an electrical gauge where a machine comes in and goes ka-chunk, ka-chunk and it's done. This, there's a lot of human input into that and human labor is expensive. It sure is beautiful. 
A little, a little look at the skookumness of this thing. Die cast and then painted. You can tell which direction the fella uh, blasted her just with a little speckle pattern. Biddle instrument since 19, 1895, inspected by 54. Myrtle, if you're out there, I hope you're enjoying your retirement. This threw me for a loop. I, I figured it was just to keep the, uh, the face in place, but it appears to be some sort of resonant item. You see, they wouldn't bend those. And they're both bent. They wouldn't bend those. And then they've got all kinds of adjustments in here with a rod betwixt the two. So this has to be some sort of damping to prevent, I would say to prevent resonant frequencies within the casement to affect the reading or unduly affect the reading. It's got to have something to do with, with the accuracy of the gauge. If you look at how it's made, if that was only to hold this in place or to hold it up, uh, they wouldn't have bent that and there wouldn't be a, there wouldn't be a tie rod here. That's kind of unfortunate that they don't have these around anymore because it's a, a very illustrative example of resonant frequencies and harmonics. So if I give this a whack, it's going to oscillate at its resonant frequency. Uh, we'll go over here to 4000, so that'll be 66 hertz that's resonating at. But the other thing we can do is if we feed this a vibration of 66 hertz, you will see that it, because it's at its resonant frequency, that harmonic will set up in the time. The more I mess with this, the more I realize how fantastic, it's really unfortunate that they don't make these anymore. How would you, for instance, measure the hammer blows of a tool? Well, you'd have to record the audio and then go back in post-processing and then count the pulses and coincide that with how many wax per minute. But in this case, we just put the dick in the vise You can see that guy right there, we're at 3,400 bops per minute. And if we look at what they're claiming, 3,500 bops per minute. If you ever come across one of these and some old codger's hoard, uh, widow's getting rid of or so forth, you pick them up for 10 bucks or you know, less, don't throw it out, pick it up. They're cool as frig. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.